Colossal Claims or Genetic Gimmick, The Return of the Dire Wolf, Romulus and Remus, not the mythical founders of Rome, but two furry cubs in an undisclosed location being cradled like celebrities of science fiction. Biotech firm Colossal Biosciences says these pups share close genetic resemblance with the long-extinct dire wolf brought back, sort of, through genome editing. The company claims it used DNA from ancient fossils, some as old as 72,000 years, and blended that with the genome of modern gray wolves to create these living hybrids. But not everyone is howling with excitement. So, yes, they have slightly genetically modified wolves, maybe. Um, and that's probably the best that you're going to get. And those slight modifications seem to have been derived from retrieved dire wolf material. Does that make it a dire wolf? No. Does it make a slightly modified gray wolf? Yes. <laughs> and that's probably about it. The company has dubbed the cubs Romulus, Remus, and Khaleesi, all part of a story that sounds more HBO than Harvard. Bradshaw is particularly skeptical of the lack of shared evidence. When, when you claim all these great big things and then you don't provide the associated evidence, especially in something as controversial as this, that is a massive red flag. It suggests that, well, at, at best, they've over-exaggerated. Uh, at worst, they're lying through their teeth. Colossal says these dire wolves are part of a larger push to bring back extinct species using CRISPR gene editing, and has also announced projects involving the red wolf and even a woolly mouse engineered with traits of a mammoth. But critics say Jurassic Park should stay fiction for good reason. We don't, we don't have the technology to modify entire genomes. We can modify po components of genomes, and we can certainly sequence genomes, but the fact that fossil evidence, unless it's only recently extinct and very essentially not been degraded for very long, this is why sort of the Jurassic Park concept is even more fantastical, because we're talking about tens of millions of years between deposition of the individual and finding the fossil. So the, 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 the DNA degradation would mean that if you could get a few base pairs out, you're doing well, and that would, you can, that's not enough to create an entire genome. Bradshaw warns that the DNA degradation from fossils that old makes true de-extinction virtually impossible. You might get fragments, not a full comeback tour. Even if you could recreate an extinct species, where would you put them? Bradshaw says a viable population would require thousands of genetically diverse animals or else risk inbreeding depression and a swift exit from the gene pool. Where do you put them? I mean, this is one thing that seems to be completely lost on the de-extinction people is that, let's say that even you, you manage to bring back a sufficient number of mammoths or dire wolves to create a viable population. This is important because you need thousands of completely genetically diverse individuals in a population for having any chance of surviving into the future. The whole Adam and Eve concept that we create two and they can just go on and do their own thing. Now that's called inbreeding depression. And, <laughs> and then things die very quickly. You know, most introductions of most species fail over 99%. Why? Because there's a few individuals that inbreed themselves out of existence. And this is the same with respect to um, in, in humans. It happens in humans, it happens in mice, it happens in, in the smallest individuals. Colossal Biosciences, founded in 2021, says it's ushering in a bold new age of de-extinction science. Skeptics say it's more branding than biology. For now, Romulus and Remus are real. Dire wolves? Not quite. From the Ice Age to Instagram Age, are we witnessing the future of conservation? Or is it just a biotech flex? For now, one thing is clear. Science is watching. And so are the dire warnings.